Uh, this morning, I want to speak on the importance of spiritual friendships. Um, you'll understand why as I give him introduction. Uh, it's a very important topic in, in my mind, in my heart, and I just think that sometimes we forget how important it is. To introduce this topic, I wanted to think about the fact <clears throat> that we have friends. And the fact is interesting, it is very clear uh, that we all realize that friendships are important, especially when we feel lonely, right? And this current pandemic has resulted in lockdowns and restrictions that has resulted in a huge rise in experiences of loneliness, of stress, of violence and depression, among other things. <clears throat> Many people are feeling it. And now we find in New Zealand, it's coming out <clears throat> in the news. And even uh, the few days ago, we find that psychiatrists, <clears throat> a large percentage of psychiatrists in New Zealand uh, would actually prefer if they quit because they too are feeling the stress. But what I found interesting is there was an article uh, published in February this year <coughs> um, by a person called Katie Warren. <coughs> and if you look at the topic you see there on the slide, it's actually a very uh, sobering title. <coughs> it says this, Japan, has appointed a minister of loneliness after seeing suicide rates in the country increase for the first time in 11 years. I just want to share a few <coughs> portions of this article. Um, so apologize, I'm going to read it. It says here, Japan has appointed a minister of loneliness to try and reduce the loneliness and social isolation among its residents as the country deals with rising suicide rates. During the month of October, more Japanese died from suicide than had died from COVID-19 in all of 2020. Remember, this is last year. There were 2,153 suicide deaths that month and 1,765 total death, virus deaths up to the end of October, according to the Japanese National Police Agency. Studies show that loneliness has been linked to a higher risk of health issues like heart disease, dementia, and eating disorders. <clears throat> so can you imagine that was last year and, and it's been going on now for another year. Can you imagine what's happening? And, it, and part of that article also mentioned this, very interesting things they tried to do. People have worked to solve the loneliness issue in a variety of ways. One company designed a robot to hold someone's hand when they're lonely and one man charges people to simply sit with them and do nothing except keep them company. <clears throat> you can see how, how bad it is. It, clearly the problem of loneliness we find is directly related to a lack of friendships, right? Or more accurately, I would say a lack of intimate friendships. So as innovative for me as, as having a robot hold your hand or paying someone to just sit with you, these are actually stopgap measures, right? And we, we can realize that. But can you imagine that a robot or someone you don't want just sitting down there not saying anything to be with you actually helps? This actually highlights for me the fact that we need to find real friends. But here's the problem <clears throat> that many people I've spoken to in my all my years uh, in ministry is that the problem is we know friendships are important. But there is actually confusion as to what friendships is and, and how come I have friends and yet I feel lonely. Now, a few, uh, I think last month I shared during communion very briefly in, uh, about someone's reflection of a New York, New York Times article by another person called Kate Murphy. And I want to elaborate a bit more. The title of that article is, Do Your Friends Actually Like You? And, and the first point I want to highlight is that of the one researcher and author uh, in the article by the name of Alexander Nehamas. And he said he found the concept of friendship difficult to describe, much less define. And in his opinion, it's easier to describe friendship as what is not friendship. But one of the observations he made that's important was that friendship, he said, is not instrumental, meaning it's not something to be used for selfish reasons. 
friendships need to be appreciated. And, and I'll bring that up again um, later on in the sermon. And some examples he gave was this. Uh, it's not, friendship is not for you to, as a means to gain a higher status. It's not a means for you to wrangle an invitation to someone's vacation home. It's not a means for you to escape your own boredom. But as you see that, don't you? We see how important it is because that's what people look at friendships. What people think friendships are like for many people, right? You know, I'm bored, so I call my friend. The friend is there to help me in my boredom. <clears throat> All right, a friend is there to help me move up the ladder. But that's not what friendship is, right? And then the second expert, Ronald Sharp, is a professor who teaches a course on the literature of friendship. And he made this astute comment, in my opinion. He says this, it's not about what someone can do for you. It's who and what the two of you become in each other's presence. Listen to the packet. What the two of you become in each other's presence. The notion of doing nothing but spending time in each other's company has, in a way, become a lost art. Says people are so eager to maximize efficiency of relationship that they have lost touch with what it is to be a friend. So I just want to summarize two things here before I move into the text. That you have noticed that these two experts bring up some important observations. Uh, the first one is the true friendship between two people, among other things, is seen when the two people appreciate each other and they don't take advantage of each other. And that the two will grow when they are in each other's presence. So they become something better in each other's presence. So you think about it, if we have such friendships, surely loneliness will not be a major problem in our lives, right? But that's what tends to be lacking. And it's really scary that even among Christians, we don't have really good friends. <clears throat> In fact, my eye thinking is that the question is, do we have among our friendships, spiritual friendships? This is my topic, so my topic the importance of spiritual friendships. And what I'm going to talk about is not just among each other, but with God first and then with others. And the two things mention genuine appreciation and growth that comes with each being each other's presence are some of the characteristics that actually are part of spiritual friendships. So do we have among our friendships, spiritual friendships? You see, for me, spiritual friendships are the most significant type of friendships because they are very, very important. And we find that Jesus taught and demonstrated spiritual friendships. And I want to read to you John chapter 15, verse 11 to 17. And again, I've highlighted a, a few portions so that you can see, and I'm going to just focus on these portions. This is what Jesus said. <clears throat> these things I've spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I've called you friends. For all that I've heard from my father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you and that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the father in my name he may give it to you these things i command you so that you will love one another <clears throat> now there are four things from this passage which i want to highlight about spiritual friendships obviously there are more things about friendship from other passages, but just these four things I want to focus on, on spiritual friendships with both God and others from this passage. And the first one is the uh, communion. <clears throat> That's the first thing. Um, what is communion? <clears throat> you actually understand that the word communion is a deep, intimate kind of communication. So it's not just communication, but it is something deep. That's, That's the concept of communion. You're together, deep. 
Okay, and in communion, you will find it is not superficial, where life actually is freely shared. You know, that kind of thing when it's together. And you see that in, in, in the passage there, it, we find Jesus says things like, I have spoken to you. This is God talking to us. And he says, for all that I heard from my father, I made known to you. you. You see how intimate and deep that is? It's not just superficial stuff. Things he's heard from the father, he's made known to us. He says, I chose you and appointed you. I'm just giving you some brief things and I'll, I'll come back again later and go a bit deeper. But just want you to think of these things, communion. The second one is love. <clears throat> Spiritual friendships will be characterized by love. Love is a lifestyle thing here. It is where love is freely expressed. And you see that in Jesus mentioning things like, you, lo you love one another. Love as I have loved you. Love one another. Three times it comes up. The third thing is this, <clears throat> good fruit. Why I say good fruit is because you notice that it's a natural result of true communion and love. It's going to be good fruit. And one of the fruits he mentions here is my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. And Jesus says, you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. <clears throat> the fourth one is obedience to God. In spiritual friendships, God and his commandments are foundational. And, and you see, that's very different from many friendships we have. The focus here is on God. This is my commandment. Ah, uh, you are my friends if you do what I command you. These things I have commanded you. Quickly summary, before I get deeper, is this four things I want us to consider on spiritual friendships with Jesus, with God, and also with, with each other. It is based on communion with God and each other. <clears throat> it is based on love for God and for each other. It results in good fruit, which is God's best for us. Okay, And it is based on obedience to God. Now, just let's look at these things a little deeper. The first one I mentioned was spiritual friendships is based on communion with God. It is a very important theological <clears throat> concept. We know as we studied and understood that God is three persons in one and yet in perfect communion. Now, if you read <clears throat> the passage again and you, you keep going further down, you will see these things happening. What we see is that Jesus, the son, hears from the father, right? Verse 15. The father does what we ask in Jesus' name. You go down to verse 26, it talks about the spirit in communion with the father and the son. He, he continues to say, but when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father, he will bear witness about me. Spiritual friendship with Jesus is actually to have communion with God. Spiritual friendships with each other also requires us to have communion with God. Now, you keep looking further and you really realize that one aspect of the spiritual friendship communion is actually prayer. It's linked to prayer. Okay, So Jesus links spiritual friendship with what he has heard from the Father through prayer. He hears things from the Father and he shares it in friendship. So this is what James Houston says, a uh, very astute observation on prayer. Um, you will find he, he writes beautifully on spirituality, about prayer, about the Trinity, in a very practical way. He says this, why is prayer the most intimate expression of the Christian life? Probably the most neglected. We always talk about prayer, right? You know, I, I keep telling us we need to pray, we need to pray. And we see that in the Bible, but why is it somehow the most neglected? And this is what he says. I believe this reflects our general fear of intimacy, our fear of self-exposure, which in turn is responsible for our lack of deep friendship and indeed for undernourishment <clears throat> of our whole relational life as we live to perform rather than to be. <clears throat> I don't know whether it makes sense, but you see a true and growing prayer life requires an honest intimacy with God. When you pray to God, when you come to God and pray, we, we cannot pretend. We cannot try to bluff God. 
We know because God knows everything. So when we come to prayer, we don't develop <clears throat> that friendship when we try to pretend about things. We have to be open and honest. And if we neglect prayer, obviously we cannot have this relationship <clears throat> with Jesus. And he will not grow. Remember that even the secular researchers and teachers on friendship discern that friendship is, is I'm going to quote this again, it is who and what the two of you become in each other's presence. <clears throat> so prayer is first and foremost about coming to God's presence and being with God. Asking God for things is not the primary purpose of prayer. And we know that <clears throat> deep inside. And that's why many people have no there's this fear and, and ability to have intimate, close friendships because we don't realize even with God, we don't have that kind of intimate relationship. <clears throat> also, we notice that growing spiritual friendship with others needs prayer because prayer is part of our communion and fellowship. Now, I'm not just talking about saying that, oh, uh, we need to meet together, we need always to be praying. <clears throat> I'm not saying that, that every time we meet, hey, before we meet, have coffee, let's pray together. But what is happening is that Jesus links the fruit of spiritual friendship with prayer. Notice that <clears throat> he says this, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give it to you. <clears throat> this friendship thing is connected to prayer. <clears throat> And again, some words from James Houston. He says, spiritual friendship means the friendship of those who are the prayerful companions of God. With such friends, we enjoy what the Puritan Robert Bolton called a comfortable walking with God. At the time when comfort meant not lethargic or complacent, but gaining strength. The strength comes directly from being together. This spiritual friendship grows when both friends have a growing prayer life, a communion with God. It's important. <clears throat> the second one is, I mentioned that spiritual friendship is based on love, right? We know that great relationships are when each feels loved and safe, right? When you come it's a safe place, then you know that friendship is important. <clears throat> and we find that Jesus' relationship with his father is based on love, right? Go out through John, different portions, we find very interesting things happening. For example, John chapter 5, verse 20 says this, For the father loves the son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will he show him so that you may marvel. The focus is the father loves the son. We go down to John chapter 14, <clears throat> Jesus says this, I do as the father has commanded me so that the world may know that I, Love the Father. It talks about let's rise, let's go from here. So it's about love. The relationship is love. The Father loves the Son. The Son loves the Father. And how do we understand love? <clears throat> well, spiritual friendship, the love aspect we find in the Bible is linked with sacrifice. How do we, we know that? Well, we understand the depth of real love and friendship through Jesus' sacrifice of laying down his life. We read that in 1 John 3, verse 16. Greater love has no man than this, and a man who lay down his life for his friends. And very interestingly, one author was saying, this is very different in contrast with Judaism, where the generally it sees such self-sacrifice as unnecessary. It's not the way we should live our life. It should be very, very rare. But Jesus is telling us it's different friends sacrifice for each other. And what's really, really powerful is you look at that passage there. A servant literally means slave, right? So a servant is property of his master. And the servant is expected to give his life for his master. And while Jesus is still the master, he does the opposite, right? Because of this dynamic, he added in spiritual friendship as a dy dynamic. So the weird part is the master is giving up his life for his slaves because they are his friends. And that is the mark of spiritual friendship. 
refined through the spiritual friendship with God will bear fruit. You see, <clears throat> Jesus wants us to bear fruit that will last. He says that, right? And he will enable us by his grace. We read throughout the Bible, we see interesting things like Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. This is what Apostle Paul says. I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. He said, don't worry. <clears throat> Basically, you, you will grow. The fruit will come. And of course, the famous passage, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, we know the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love is joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. <clears throat> And we ask for the fruit because God wants to give it. Spiritual friendships you find will actually help us to bear fruit. Isn't it? It's important to know something interesting, right? You know that, that Jesus is God. We know that. Yet he chose to have spiritual friends. Jesus technically doesn't need friends because God the Trinity is complete. It's always been in harmony. Yet he says, I chose you, I appointed you, and he wants to call us friends. And he set us an example. It was a very another interesting article <clears throat> in a Wired magazine uh, by a guy called Brandon Kroner. And, and, and he mentions, he, his title is Seeker of AA. After 75 years, we don't know how it works. The, the reason why the, it's a long article, almost boring actually, but it, it's... Uh, it's something they say we don't know how it works because he's looking at from the terms of modern research into behavioral dynamics and neuroscience and stuff like that. They're trying to find a scientific understanding of how AA works, <clears throat> and they can't. But what's interesting is this same article admits one important factor, that the power of a small group of like-minded friends who support honesty and accountability and we know that's the hallmark of AA, that you're supposed to be there with this group of people, you're committed to the group, and you need to be honest. <clears throat> you're alcoholic, you've got this issue, and you need to be accountable, and the group helps and supports them. That's the secret. Spiritual friendships are about, we know, right? Honesty, accountability to achieve spiritual goals. And so here's the problem we find in the church today the wrong kind of individualistic thinking. We really need to reject dangerous things like, you know, the way we think like, it's between me and God. You know, I don't need to be in church. You know, I don't need that. I can be with God anytime I want. Oh, I can watch the sermon later. It's important to be with a group of people. And then the, the problem is today is, if I share, you know, that I'm struggling a little bit here, others will think I'm weak. How do we get help? And people, of course, my famous one, I am just as close to God as in the golf course as I am in this church meeting. <clears throat> so I go and play golf. I've been in the wilderness. I'm close to God, just as close. I don't need to be in church. I don't need to gather together. It's difficult, isn't it? Home groups, gathering together for Sunday worship, prayer meetings, Bible studies, fellowship groups, etc., are vital for spiritual growth. Why? Spiritual friendships are discovered in these such groups. They are created to develop through these groups. And it's so sad today that Christians are willing to commit to things like, you know, I'm going for professional mentors and groups. I go for personal development courses, like life coaching. You know, I, I, I'm a member of my, I don't know, my, my football, football group. I hang out with this group of friends. You know, I go to the once a week, I'll go to the bar with my buddies and fun. We go to sports occasions. These are important relations, but at the same time, these same Christians reject Discipleship groups, Christian spiritual relationships. That <clears throat> doesn't help. Fourth one you mentioned is spiritual friendship is based on obedience to God. Spiritual friendships are a relationship where the focus is not about what I want, but what I need to grow as a Christian. And the common interests of such friendships are spiritual based. So there's nothing wrong with <clears throat> a bunch of friends of similar hobbies and likes. You know, I enjoy talking to my friends who, you know, who, who do magic. You know, it, it's something that binds us together. I, I enjoy my friends who like to tell jokes and puns and things. It's great. But I need spiritual friendships too, right? Where 
we will learn to obey God. It helps us better to trust and obey God through shared life. <clears throat> all right? How do we love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength? Is to obey God, right? So we need that. Look at that. Why does Jesus want us to obey him? It's for his sake. No, it's for our sake. So that we may bear fruit that lasts. It's not about blind obedience, but a confidence due to knowing that God is loving, God is wise, that we want to obey. And because Jesus offers us understanding of God's mind and good purpose for our lives. You think of the friends in the Bible. <clears throat> Abraham was considered God's friend, right? So was Moses. And how is that friendship shown? By obedience to God. Spiritual friendships help us to obey God, right? Jesus said this, you are my friends if you do what I command. Proverbs reminds us, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. In other words, spiritual friends are needed because they keep us on the right track, even though their reminders and encouragements sometimes can be painful. And remember the big, big sin that happened, the first major sin after falling of Adam and Eve? When Cain killed Abel, God asked Cain this question. The Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? What was Cain's reply? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? But the point of the question is, yes, you are your brother's keeper. It helps us. Here's the problem that I find that <clears throat> many Christians struggle with. It's hard to obey God, you know, hard to obey Christ. You know, he asked me to do things which, you know, spoils my fun. It, it makes me feel insecure, all kinds of reasons. But obeying Jesus is not difficult, right? Let me realize this, that Jesus chose to reveal the things of God to us. How, how not to want to obey him? The things of God are given to us. The fact is we are God's property. Yet he treats us as friends. Man, it's not that hard to obey such a person. Of course, then we know that Jesus loves us. He died on the cross for our sins. God died for my sins. Why can't I want to obey him? Jesus, we know, wants the best for us. Why? Did he choose us? If you read carefully, I don't have time to look through you, but you go back and read that passage again. You notice he chose and appointed us to bear fruit at last. If you look at the text carefully, you see there are two double emphasis. He chose, he appointed. Bear fruit and fruit at last. These are double emphasis. He wants the very best for us. And more important in the terms of the era of friendship is this. Jesus doesn't see us as a mission field, you know. Some people say, oh, he just wants to save us, so it's great for him. No, he sees us as his friends. <clears throat> and we know friendships are not the best spiritual friendships or not spiritual friendships at all when we treat people like property. This is a testimony from a Mexican student. He was talking about his American so-called friends who he got to know when they went to Mexico. <clears throat> he says this, in Mexico, they wanted to be my friends because they wanted to do missions to me. But when I moved to the United States, no one wanted to be my friend because a couple of years later, he managed to go to the US as a student. Now they don't want anything to do with him. Remember the example of what the secular researchers said on friendship when I started the sermon with? Friendship is not instrumental. It is not a means to obtain higher status, wrangle an invitation to someone's vacation home, or simply escape your own boredom. Jesus wants to be our friends one, for our sake. We are praying that, you know, next week when we get the traffic light system, we will be, don't have to Zoom anymore. <clears throat> we don't know. <clears throat> we hope that it will last but what if we keep getting stuck in lockdowns and we are cut away from others? 
what will sustain us that we don't fall into that depression and the suicide pattern and all that kind of things that we're reading about happening in the world. What will sustain us is knowing Jesus, not just as our God, but our friend as well. And he's there. You need to develop their spiritual friendships. So let us work on building friendships, spiritual friendships with God and with others. We have four things to start with. Communion is shared. When we pray, we spend time with God. Let us be really, really open with God. God really knows everything. The more we share our life with God, the more our friendship with God will grow. The more we share our life freely and deeply, intimately with others that God has led us to, <clears throat> you'll find your spiritual friendships will grow. He needs love. Love and mutual sacrifice is practice. We already know God loves us. So how do we not just love God? I say loving God is just mean that we do things that comes to obedience part. But just being with God, <clears throat> sacrificing things to God, because we know he loves us and that's the way we show love and looking for friends and things where you know that if you really have a problem, you need help and you call that person, that person will be there to help you. And if we have friends like that, wow, we are blessed, right? Good fruit. This is the result of such friendships of love and communion. Look for friendships where each help us on our spiritual goals to bear fruit that will last, that brings God glory, that brings people, I don't know, beautiful blessings, fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, generous self-control. And last but not least, let us work on friendship that results in obedience to God. This is the goal and result of spiritual friendships. We obey God more freely and happily and when our friends are together with us, we spur one another on to obedience. Spiritual friendships are needed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you, our God, send us Lord Jesus Christ to earth <clears throat> so that God, the Son, would actually take on human form to teach us and demonstrate friendship real spiritual friendship. We thank you that we are called your friends. It is for us to be your friends. Help us, Lord, to respond by being a friend to you and to others. A spiritual friendships will grow where there is deep communion, there is deep love. That fruit will be seen through this friendship. And also, Lord, that our lives will be marked by obedience to you. Help us, we pray. In Jesus' name. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and all of us now and forever. Amen.